Well, welcome everybody. Welcome to today's service on the 17th of January. We hope you've had a great week and we are so pleased that you can join with us in worship today. And as we gather for worship this morning, we acknowledge the traditional owners of the lands on which we are meeting, wherever that may be, and we recognise their special cultural bonds with these lands. We commit to seeking the reconciliation between First and Second Nations peoples of this land, and we pray for this continuing process and those involved in it. And our opening hymn today, quite appropriately, Jesus calls us here to meet him. Jesus calls us here to meet him as through word and song and prayer. promised presence where his people live and care praise the God who keeps his promise praise the Son who calls us friends praise the Spirit who among us to our hopes and fears attend calls us to confess him word of life and lord of all sharer of our flesh and frailness saving all who fail or fall to his holy human story tell his tales that all may hear tell the world that Christ in glory came to earth to meet us here. Jesus calls us to each other, vastly different though we are, creed and color, class and gender neither limit nor debar join the hand of friend and stranger join the hands of age and youth join the faithful and the doubter in their common search for truth firm in time and space where the church in earth and heaven finds a common meeting place share the bread and wine his body share the love of which we sing share the feast for saints and sinners hosted by Lord and King. Jesus does indeed call on us to meet with him both here and in our daily lives. So our call for worship. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit down and when I rise up. You discern my thoughts from far away. You search out my path and my lying down and are acquainted with all my ways. Even before a word is on my tongue, O Lord, you know it completely. You hem me in, behind and before, 
and lay your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It is so high that I cannot attain it. Those, of course, are words from Psalm 139. So let us praise our loving God. Let us lift up our hearts before him in everlasting love toward him who created us, knowing that whatever we do, the Lord God loves us now and forevermore. Amen. Let us pray. The rhythm of life is yours, O God. The changing of the seasons, the busyness of the day, and the night's stillness. Youth's energy and age's measured wisdom. For daylight followed by hours of darkness, for the time of letting go. For the overlapping of the seen and the unseen, heaven and earth, body and spirit. Rest and dying and new life are all part of your rhythm, O God. Thanks be to you. Amen. In silence, let us confess our sins to God. Do not be distressed or angry with yourselves, for though we have sinned, Christ has gone before us to create new life, showing God's mercy to all and bringing us out of the prison of disobedience. Sisters and brothers, your sins are forgiven. Be at peace. Amen. And now that we have made our peace with God, let us make peace with those around us, and as we light this candle, let us all pray for peace in the world. So as a community, let us pray. God, from whom we cannot hide, you discern our thoughts and know our words before we speak. Hear the prayers we bring for the world and for the church. We give you thanks that you reveal yourself to us in all the wonder of your creation. We pray for the preservation of the earth and for wise and just use of its resources. God, you know our ways. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that you reveal yourself to us in a Messiah born to set your people free. We pray for the liberation of all people from oppression, injustice and war. God, you know our ways. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that you reveal yourself to us in a Messiah born to bring salvation to your people. We pray for a church united in truth and righteousness and in a desire to proclaim your gospel throughout the world. God, you know our ways. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We 
give you thanks that you reveal yourself to us in a Messiah, born to bring love and forgiveness to your people. We pray for our families and our friends, for relationships of love, generosity and mutual respect. God, you know our ways. In your mercy, hear our prayer. We give you thanks that you reveal yourself to us in a Messiah, born to bring healing and wholeness to your people. We pray for comfort and peace for all who suffer, strength and gentleness for all who care for them. God, you know our ways. In your mercy, hear our prayer. for this community. We pray for Jim and Grant and for Grant's father Cyril and Jim's sister Marge as they face health issues. We pray for Jill, a friend of Margaret and Sydney and her ongoing treatment. We pray for Paul and Rhonda's friend Richard who is also undergoing medical treatment. We continue to pray for Ivy and Gus and Sharon Tyler, giving thanks that Ivy's feeling a bit better at the moment. We pray for Mary's friend Susie and the difficult issues she faces, and for Daisy, Mary's mum, giving thanks for the progress she is making. We pray for Ray for healing through his ongoing medical treatment. We pray for Chrissy for continuing strength and encouragement and Barbara and her family, especially Brady as she deals with health issues. And we also pray for Lorraine, Barbara's sister-in-law facing health problems. We pray for Beryl and Ray and Beryl's brother and sister facing health issues and Jan and Wal as they too face health problems. And indeed, we pray for Faye, continuing prayers for her, for Suzanne's sister in Queensland, facing health problems, and our friend Pearlie. We give thanks that she feels great comfort from these services that we're putting online, and we pray for her health also. We pray for Shaquille and for Denzel. And this week we pray for Cynthia's family in South Africa who have lost their third member to COVID just this year. We pray for their healing and their peace and comfort at this time. And we also pray for those who have not made their requests known but are still in need. Jesus, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Now together in whichever language we feel most comfortable with, let us pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those that sin against us. And save us from the time of trial. Deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And our first reading today comes from the first book of Samuel beginning at chapter 3 verse 1. Now the boy Samuel was ministering to the Lord under Eli. The word of the Lord was rare in those days. Visions were not widespread. At that time, Eli, whose eyesight had begun to grow dim so that he could not see, was lying down in his room. The lamp of God had not yet gone out, and Samuel was lying down in the temple of the Lord where the ark of God was. 
Then the Lord called Samuel, Samuel. And he said, Here I am. And ran to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call you. Lie down again. So he went and lay down. The Lord called again, Samuel. Samuel got up and went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. But he said, I did not call, my son. Lie down again. Now Samuel did not yet know the Lord, and the word of the Lord had not yet been revealed to him. The Lord called Samuel again a third time, and he got up and he went to Eli and said, Here I am, for you called me. Then Eli perceived that the Lord was calling the boy. Therefore Eli said to Samuel, Go, lie down, and if he calls you, you shall say, Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. So Samuel went and lay down in his place. Now the Lord came and stood there, calling as before, Samuel, Samuel. And Samuel said, Speak, for your servant is listening. For the wisdom of the ancient Hebrews, Thanks be to God. Our second reading comes from the Gospel of John, beginning at chapter 1, verse 43. The next day, Jesus decided to go to Galilee. He found Philip and said to him, Follow me. Now Philip was from Bethsaida, the city of Andrew and Peter. Philip found Nathanael and said to him, we have found him about whom Moses in the law and also the prophets wrote, Jesus, son of Joseph from Nazareth. Nathanael said to him, Can anything good come out of Nazareth? Philip said to him, Come and see. When Jesus saw Nathanael coming toward him, he said of him, Here is truly an Israelite in whom there is no deceit. Nathanael asked him, Where did you get to know me? Jesus answered, I saw you under the fig tree before Philip called you. Nathanael replied, Rabbi, you are the Son of God. You are the King of Israel. Jesus answered, Do you believe because I told you that I saw you under the fig tree? You will see greater things than these. And he said to him, Very truly I tell you, you will see heaven opened and the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. For the good news that Christ brings, thanks be to God. And our next hymn, the piece of reflection music, it's a, chase, a taze chant called Bless the Lord My Soul. Bless the Lord
story of God's call to Samuel and the first thing I think of is what a night that must have been for him. Several times hearing his name being called and thinking it was the elderly priest Eli calling for him, only to be told to go back to bed until Eli twigged what was happening and told Samuel if he heard the call again to respond with the words, speak Lord for your servant is listening. This is a key part of Israel's history. God does call Samuel again by name and the boy responds as Eli told him to. But in the verses following, God tells Samuel that he's about to do a new thing in Israel. God is in fact going to appoint a king to rule over the people and Samuel is going to have a pivotal role in that. That's a daunting responsibility, no doubt, for someone who is probably in their mid-teens, if that. We are told he is a boy. When I read this reading, I always remember, I always think back to people's, when people's lives, when God makes a call on them. Do you remember when you heard God's call on your life? How old were you? How did you respond at first? How did it change your life? What new things did you do? Answering the call of God on your life is an important thing and understandably, not everyone answers, speak Lord, for your servant is listening straight away. And many people don't answer at all. If you're one of those people who initially chose to ignore God's call on your life, you are in fine company. The list includes Moses, who told God to get someone else to lead the people out of Egypt. Or Jonah, who ran away and got on a boat heading in the other direction, rather than go to the people of Nineveh and preach a message of repentance from their sins. And Jeremiah the prophet, who when God called him, replied, I am just a boy, I don't know what to say. So if you originally said no to God, you are certainly not alone. I was one of these people also, and hearing this story about Samuel always causes me to think back on my own experience. How when I was in the Anglican Church, our particular congregation was seeking to appoint three lay ministers as we did not have a vicar. I would often feel a sense of the need deep inside for me to take one of these positions. And when the time came to apply for one of them, I would back down and say, oh, that's not for me. But after many months and many promptings from somewhere deep within me, I felt compelled to respond with a yes to one of these positions. And to my surprise, was accepted. Once I said yes to that calling to become a lay minister in the Anglican Church, my life changed dramatically. And as I mentioned last week, here I am today. And I think that is why I'm so interested in people's stories about how they were converted and how they came to accept God and answer his call on their lives. But some people answer the call of God immediately, and Philip appears to be one of them. It is thought that Philip may have been a disciple of John the Baptist, and so when John the Baptist points out Jesus as the Lamb of God, as we see in John's Gospel, 
Philip may have been ready to change allegiance, and so he's immediately ready to go when Jesus finds him and says, follow me. Immediately on being called, Philip goes to his friend Nathaniel. He's all excited and tells him that the Messiah has been found. But Nathaniel is disbelieving at first. But then Philip invites him to come and see. I think these words are so important in the toolkit of any disciple. For essentially, that is all any disciple needs. Philip's statement of who Jesus was did not change Nathaniel's mind. But once invited to come and see Christ for himself, Nathaniel confessed to Jesus, You are the Son of God. With those three words, Philip did what every disciple should do. Be able to state your faith in Jesus and when met with disbelief, simply ask people to come and see for themselves. You don't have to rant and rave. You don't have to push religion down people's throats. You simply tell what Christ has done for you and then offer the invitation, come and see. Through Philip's invitation, Nathaniel also becomes one of the original 12 apostles. Although in the synoptic gospels, which is Matthew, Mark and Luke, he is known better as Bartholomew. For both men, answering the call of Jesus was a life-changing experience. There is a mid-4th century document called The Acts of Philip. I'll, I'll say that again. The Acts of Philip. That goes on to explain some of the ministry that Philip did about his life. Following the resurrection, Philip and his master and his sister, Marianne and Bartholomew, who we can safely assume is Nathaniel, I think, were sent to preach in Greece, Syria and Turkey. And through a miraculous healing and powerful preaching by Philip, the wife of the head of the city of Hierapolis in Turkey became a convert. This greatly upset her husband, who then had Philip, Mariam and Bartholomew tortured, and then had Philip and Bartholomew crucified upside down. Pretty daunting, pretty scary for them. But Philip continued to preach from the cross, so the book says. His preaching so powerful that the people regretted their actions and took Bartholomew down from his cross. But Philip insisted on staying and eventually died on the cross. He willingly gave his life this way for the man who said to him, follow me. And this is the call that Jesus still issues to people today. Follow me. There are so many ways we can do this. You see that in church, when people offer to read scripture or lead worship, or by offering to sing a song of praise, or give prayers for the community, both locally and worldwide. Other examples, and I'm thinking of our uh, Nariwara North community in particular, could be managing and volunteering in our op shop or growing fresh produce to help others or being on our fundraising committee in order to send donations to the various charities we support. The list is endless. I'm sure we can think of many other things. But these are all examples of people answering the call of God as best they can. To answer the call of God is a personal thing. No one can make that decision for you. You have to make that for yourself. And you have to work out how best you can do that when you do decide to say yes, when God calls your name. Others can help you with that, and I'm certainly happy to help you with that. But it is a life-changing decision, make no mistake. When God calls out your name and when Jesus asks, follow me, you have to be prepared for that, for he is asking you to walk in his way, to do as he does, and to treat all people as he does, with love and compassion. Are you prepared for that? How are you continuing this process? 
and on the way, where are you heading? Um, now, some reflection. Just a few notices this week. Uh, next Saturday, the 23rd of January, we will be having our summer pilgrimage at Lister Field Lake. We'll meet at the beach car park at 12.30, uh, where we will have lunch together, and that will be followed by a one-hour meditative walk. So please ring or register in our events book to let us know that you are coming. Next Sunday we have uh, our usual worship service and again you are invited to join that. Just a reminder of the coffee cup challenge, we are heading towards Lent. So each week we are asked to just put the cost of a cup of coffee in a special jar or something and save that money up uh, and that will be collected just before Lent and the money raised will go to the work of Knighting, which is the agency arm of the Uniting Church. On Ash Wednesday, which is the 17th of February, Easter is early this year, 17th of February for Ash Wednesday, there will be a service at 7pm, and everyone is invited to that, depending on restrictions, of course. And also, we are going to have a Lenten study this Lent, uh, probably Friday nights, 6pm, for uh, pizza and passages, or prayer and pizza, as we have there. The details, of course, will be confirmed very soon, but again, you'll need to let us know, either by phone call or through the events book in church, uh, if you are going to participate in that. I think you should have some good fun and some good reflection over Lent this year. Ah, we come to our words and mission. Since before we came into being, our Lord God has been calling us into relationship with him. As we go from these places of worship, live your life in answer to the call. And like St. Philip the Apostle, bring those nearest to us into that same love of God. Amen. In following you, O Christ, we choose to love and not harden our hearts, even when the unimaginable may happen. Help us to remain in your presence with perseverance to carry out all that your gospel calls us to do. And as we do so, may we always be assured that the blessings of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit will go with us now and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. And our final hymn, I heard the voice of Jesus say,
Well, once again, thank you for joining us to wor for worship today. We wish you all a blessed week, and hopefully we will see you next week. Bye for now.